Hello everyone, Magdalena here, Wolf of Coins. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today will be fun. So grab yourself a hot beverage and let's begin. Uh, by the way, this is our family um, yeah, Easter ba basket. We just painted eggs today because according to an old Polish belief, if people stopped making pisanki eggs, meaning uh, these <laughs> painted eggs, the world would end. So we wouldn't want that, would we? Uh, want that, would we? <laughs> so yeah, that's what we did today. And we will be celebrating Easter with my family um, next week when we go to Poland, but you know, since I don't celebrate all the um, Christian part, <laughs> only the pagan part, so I thought we would make, uh, like, meaning my husband, my son and me, we would have our little uh, Easter, because, you know, it's anyway, it's around the time of spring equinox, it's already past, but yeah, I think it's still a good time to do that, to paint the eggs and tomorrow morning we will eat them together. And I have some chicks here, I added also some chocolate eggs and I have the ram. It was so difficult to find him in Switzerland, you guys, because everywhere you have bunnies and <laughs> and in Poland it's more about the chicks and and um, uh, ram. However, it also looks like a sheep, so I don't know because no horns. Well, <laughs> what can you do? So yeah, maybe you can look at these for now. And uh, the topic for today. Uh, so, in the old times, spring was the beginning of the new year for Slavic people. And um, we know about a myth in which a, a thunder god type deity like uh, Perun or Yash, Pierun, Piorun, um, fights with uh, like uh, Hades or Pluto like Ktonic opponent, for example, Veles or Nea in Polish version, uh, and this opponent is related to serpents. Um, so Peron defeats Veles and spring can come. Uh, so it's the end of winter because Veles, um, Veles, I have him here, he's responsible for the darker part of the year and he's the lord of the other world. So uh, he gets defeated in this combat um, and the spring can uh, start. But uh, here and there we can also hear echoes of a different version of this myth. Uh, because, you know, uh, depending on times and places, we get different versions of myths so we can observe it in all traditions, really. So... There is this version in which uh, the duel is between a god and a goddess. And for example, this author, the uh, author of this book, and a couple of others, Grzegorz Niedzielski, he uh, suggests that maybe, um, yeah, that maybe that is the case. We, that we do have like <laughs> some echoes of this myth present in our legends, in our myths, in our, yeah, history pretending to be, to be history, but being in fact a legend or a myth. So, um, we know, for example, that there was some opposition between God Perun and Goddess Mokos um, in the Eastern Slavic area. Um, and uh, around spring equinox, or so-called Green Week, um, right now it's celebrated, for example, the Green Week, or in Polish it's Zielone Świątki, which means Green Holidays. It's um, connected to Pentecost, 
So it's seven weeks after Easter, but obviously, you know, in the pagan times, it was not related to Christian uh, ceremonies. Um, so yeah, um, so around that time, because as you know, Easter is moving. It's it's depend it depends on the moon cycles. So around that time, there would be a games in which boys would fight each other, like groups of boys would fight each other, like pretend uh, battle, uh, or groups of girls uh, and boys against each other. So a group of girls against a group of boys. Mm, and we have records of that from all Slavic lands, uh, actually. So it's this type of like traditional games uh, connected to the old pag pagan um, celebrations. We also know, know that this time of the year was the other ancestors celebration, because we have, which is now really well preserved, because also of... Um, of uh, the church, the Christian church adapting it to like All Saints Day, you know, but uh, so the, the autumn jade, uh, so ancestor celebration are still like more famous, but there used to be also a big celebration in spring, which is logical because we, it's like after half a year, so at the beginning of May, we would have the spring jade and babu, which is Jade means uh, four fathers and Babi means uh, four mothers. Of course, uh, the name Jade is more popular. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm again digressing and this will be long. So I hope you have this hot beverage of yours with you. <laughs> so as a part of celebrations of spring, there would be those pretend battles. Um, and we also have a written um, legend from Czech tradition about a war between a maiden city called Devin, which means, uh, yeah, of the maidens, and men's city of uh, Visegrad, which is, I believe now it's a part of Prague. Uh, and... Um, yeah, they will build on two rocks or hills. So they would build like uh, two uh, cities on different hills. And, and yeah, so I wanted to, today, I wanted to obviously focus on the theme of a duel, of a spring duel um, or murder between... Uh, a god and a goddess. So we, for example, have a Ukrainian legend of a fight between husband and wife, and they were called Pere, 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 Pere Piat and Pere Piatiha, and names seem to hint to Perun and his wife Perperuna from some um, regions, also to god Pereplot, from Rus, but yeah, uh, so Perun was the thunder god, and about Pereplot, we we know nothing really, really certain. He might be related to waters. Some uh, scholars suggest that, but he might also be, in fact, some of the like faces of Perun, the thunder god. Um, so yeah, um, so these husband and wife, they fought at night and uh, Pere Piatiha, she mistakenly uh, took uh, um, her husband for an enemy. So there's some explanation story about how he was wearing somebody else's armor and blah, blah. But the effect is that she killed him and defeated his army. And when she learned of her mistake, she then killed herself with a sword. And yeah, and they have a near, there is a place called uh, where, 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 Hvastov, 
and they have like a barrow for each one of them. So there are two barrows, two barrows, two hills. You can see the similarity here. Um, also, also the old name for um, Visegrad was apparently Frasten, so it's a bit similar to Hvastov, but yeah, we cannot be certain of anything here. Um, there's also, of course, one of my favorite stories of um, a legend of a Polish queen Wanda, who defeated the army of Rytiger or Ritogar. Um, who wished to marry her. He died in the battle or alternatively killed himself out of despair because she rejected him and she defeated his army. Um, and then she herself jumped into Vistula River as an offering to gods for the victory. She also, <coughs> previous to that, she also killed a lot of cattle as an offering to gods. Um, we also have the southern Slavic myth of Morana and Yarilo, um, in which they are married, but then he's unfaithful and she um, kills him as vengeance. And more about that story you can find in my video about autumn equinox. I, I read the, like the whole story there. Um, we know that when spring comes, the goddess um, that can be called, as I said, Morana or Polish Marzanna, also Morena, Marmuriena, depending on the region of Slavic lands. She descends to the waters. There is the drowning of Marzanna ritual that I talked uh, about a lot in previous videos. Um, but yeah... Um, in older times, so so you basically each year on spring equinox you drown an effigy of the goddess Majanna. And in older times there was another part of the ritual that is now quite forgotten. But um, once she was drowned, or she could be like first lit on fire and put on fire and then drowned. But yeah, once she is drowned, uh, she would come back as a young goddess called the queen or the princess. Um, and she would be represented as a young tree, uh, decorated with ribbons and uh, like shiny stuff. <laughs> she would be brought uh, out of the woods. And you can compare it with the maypole known from many other traditions, also from English tradition, the maypole. Uh, so we also have something similar. Also, the name is similar. It's Maik or Gaik, something like that. Mm, what's important, there used to be a belief that around spring equinox, so March 25th, um, we have um, this folk name for this day, and it's called Holy Mother Who Opens. So Matka Boska Rostforna, so like in Christian time, uh, Virgin Mary took over here, but definitely there, there was some uh, goddess who would open the, the earth, the, the waters after winter. Um, so it, it was the time to uh, chase the snakes away. You know, and um, yeah, I have a picture here that I made and it won't fit probably here. But yeah, this is my Majanna image uh, for my oracle that I'm making. And she's, yeah, she's taking the snakes away with her to the waters. Okay, so she's, you know, she's entering the river and... She takes the snakes with her. Um, so we have here a connection of Majanna to snakes, which is not surprising because of her relation to the world of the dead and the ancestors who were often portrayed as snakes. And you remember I said that spring celebrations also included um, ancestor celebrations. And... Yeah, and I mentioned that um, the, 
the spring combat includes an opponent related to snakes. So sometimes together with her, with Marzanna, a male counterpart called Marzaniok would be also drowned. So the pair of them would be drowned. Mm, there are also traditions of hanging the Judas instead of Marzanna, uh, instead of drowning Marzanna. So it seems like a Christian influence, but it's it's really not exactly that. <laughs> mm, there are also similar customs of uh, hanging a m male person, a man, um, from Baltic traditions. And Baltic traditions are like the closest to Slavic um, traditions, so yeah, it's important. Uh, so they have the, uh, these traditions also related to their local god. They would hang him. Um, so it seems that some elements of the myth got lost. Um, but let us try and fight some, find some logic in it. Um, and we can draw, for example, on Greek myths uh, to, to find, you know, the logic of the myth and find similar stories and try to fill in the blanks. Oh, some water, excuse me. So, in Greek mythology, we have goddess Hera. I think you've heard of her. She's the um, queen of gods, queen of heavens, and so on, uh, wife of Zeus. And she each year bathes in a sacred spring. In Argos, where she was especially worshipped, um, she had three different temples where she was um, worshipped in her three forms. So it was the maiden, the wife, and the widow. These were her names. Um, now, Olympian Zeus wasn't Im immortal, as you probably know from your uh, mythology classes. But we know that before he gained that status, he used to die every year. Um, you might have heard about graves of, of Zeus in Crete, for example. And so um, Hera would bathe in a sacred spring every year, and thus her virginity was restored. So the later uh, classical period explanation for that was that she did that to please her husband, who apparently enjoyed a virgin every year. <laughs> uh, but we should not look at like cultural ex explanations, uh, but only at uh, what we see in the story uh, to see the older layer of the myth, okay? So Hera regains her virginity, so the cycle starts anew. She's the maiden again. She can then again turn into the wife and finally into the widow. And Robert Graves, you might have heard about him, uh, he suggests that Hera bathes bathe to ritually cleanse herself after a ritual murder that she's committed on her husband. Because, you know, she's a widow after all. And... Uh, we know that, for example, also in uh, Dionysus mysteries, the Menads, uh, so his female worshippers, she, uh, she, they ritually murdered uh, Dionysus, or rather, it was a calf representing him. And I'll just remind you at Vanda killing a lot of cattle around, like. In that story, I mentioned the queen who then jumped into the river. Uh, so logic, the logic of the myth here is that the god who got old needs to die to be reborn, young and strong again. Mm, and more about that, about dying and being reborn, you can um, you can watch my two videos about initiation rites in fairy tales. They are all. All the videos that I mention are on my uh, Slavic Pagan Stuff uh, playlist. You can find them there. So, so there is this Iron Wolf tale uh, video and the uh, Female initiation, initiation Rights video. 
Mm. So yeah. So the 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 examples for the god who dies and like gets old and dies and gets reborn again are countless, really countless. Let's not forget Jesus, okay? He's all he also comes back from the grave. But uh yeah, I also uh encourage you to check the video from my playlist Slavic, Slavic pagan stuff playlist uh, descending goddesses where I talk about uh, goddesses who die and and come back. <laughs> um okay. So, um so the goddess kills her husband, the god, and then often she like kills herself to join him and also be reborn. Because the act of the, the ablutions, the, the bath, is the same as a ritual death. Um, it has the meaning of renewal and also the waters being the symbol of the other world. So she enters the spring, she, she dies in a way, and then she emerges. Um, so incidentally, um, a Polish custom very much alive to this day, it's an Easter custom. It includes pouring water on each other uh, on Easter Monday. And originally, so these days, these are just crazy fights between all the members of the family and drowning your apartment. But, uh, <laughs> and also you can, like, if you go out in the in the town, strangers can attack you with water, basically. But originally it was boys pouring water on girls. So you, we see this similarity here with Majanna who goes to the waters with a woman being cleansed. Um, and of course, probably it also has the meaning of um, encouraging fertility for the, for the girls. Um, but yeah, my five-year-old son cannot wait for <laughs> for this uh, fun he's expecting because he doesn't already remember from previous years. But yeah, he's like very, very excited about the prospect of, of fighting with water. But yeah, let's not get distracted. Mm. So we have Majanna who descends to the waters. We have Vanda jumping to waters and we have people pouring water on each other. Originally boys and girls um, every year. We also have uh, Morana from the Southern Slavic uh, beliefs kill her husband and many, many other stories. Ritiger from the Vanda legend, he also dies and then Vanda kills herself. And it's like the explanation is not very clear. I talked about it in the Descending Goddesses video, but it's like she's like she's yeah, she's one, but then she has to give up her life as thanks to the gods. Mm. So, yeah, so. Also, Perepiat and Perepiaticha, they, she kills him and then kills herself. Mm, so maybe we could imagine the goddess as the one who kills her husband to give him new life, as she's the one who gives both death and, and life. And then also, she also goes through death to be renewed. Uh, please note how many layers a myth can have. In those videos about initiation, I talked about things that people did to be reborn and um, to be reborn as a, a new person, a part of a new group. And the myth tells us also about gods uh, who show us the natural order of the world. So we observe the myth happening in nature. So the cycles, the nature dying and being reborn. Uh, and we use it, use this grid of myth to be reborn ourselves. So we also 
use it for those initiation rites. And I think these are like two sources, those like myths about gods and stories about initiation that preserved the like the this story. Um, but yeah, um, what's interesting, if we read about the Maiden's War from the Czech legend, and you can actually check it out in on Wikipedia in English, there is an article about Maiden's War. Um, we read about, quote, Sharka, the ruler's lieutenant, um, entrapped a band of armed, ma armed men led by Chtirad, uh, by tying herself to a tree and claiming that the rebel maidens had tied her there and put a horn and a jug of mead out of her reach to mock her. So this was a trap, obviously. <laughs> so then the story goes about her betrayal and attack on drunk men who got drunk with the mead she offered. And Chtirat himself is tortured and killed. Um, so, so yeah, it's a grim story. But uh, again, uh, let's let's just look at the attributes, not tying them to the version of the story presented. And and this, uh, as I said, it's a uh, part of the the story of um, the city of women fighting against the city of men. So it relates to other stories I talked about today. Um, so the ap attributes, um, well, there is all in there. There is the sacred tree. Wait a minute, where I have it. There's a sacred tree, okay. And, and a woman or a goddess, we can imagine, that is one with the tree. In the story, like semi-historical semi story, it's presented as such, but it's really a myth. Um, she is tied to the tree. And here we have the um, Virgin Mary from Święta Lipka, so holy linden tree in Poland. There's a very like prominent sanctuary there. And I mentioned in my previous videos, but the relationship of the goddess and the tree is really strong in Slavic beliefs. So... So yeah, she's the one with the tree, okay? And she has a sacred horn. We can think that it's either a cow's horn or a bull's horn. Mm, cow as the sacred animal of the goddess, the nurturer, you know, um, the source of, of food, so life. <laughs> and the Bull as the substitute for the god that is killed as an offering. And a jug of sacred mead, or very often there is this lady with, uh, with a bucket or, or with a cauldron or any container really with living water. So yeah, this is Mary Magdalene, by the way. <laughs> and so yeah, so everything is in there. This is my, I've shown this picture before, but yeah, this is my uh, matron goddess, Jejilela. She's the lady of the tree. So we have this energy coming out of her in the shape of the trunk and branches. She has linden tree um, earrings. She has the horn and uh, sacred liquid inside the water of life or milk, who knows. So yeah. Um, so we see this this uh, picture painted in this legend of Sharka, and we cannot possibly mistake this woman for anyone else than the goddess. And yeah, uh, so the the world of myth is 
full of treacherous wives or sisters about the sister again check the iron wolf tail video or mothers uh, just some examples from various mythologies. In Greek mythology, we have Clytemnestra who kills Agamemnon and then she dies afterwards as well because her son Orestes kills her. Uh, Brynhild and Sigurd. There is this gorgeous picture by Arthur Rackham. So if you know uh, the Nibelungs, the, the opera or the song of Nibelung's Nibelungenlied or the story of Sigurd from the Nordic um, Edda. So he's a Germanic hero. He, um, so uh, Brynhild, who was his lover, she kill, uh, she arranges his death, okay, and then afterwards she kills herself burning on a stake. Um, and not on a stake? No, I mean like on his, uh, yeah, on his funeral pyre. Okay, um, so we also can think about this Majanna effigy being put on fire. It's a way to transport her to this land of dead, basically. <clears throat> so, Actually, actually, is Sieg Siegfried or Sigurd is he's has like depending on the version, but he he kind of has two wives and they both betray him. So we see it's like the same role; it's just multiplied. And there's Krimhild in German version or Gudrun in uh, Scandinavian version. And okay, so we also have Bloodwet. Bloodwet. And uh, from Celtic myth, who betrayed her husband Gwydion. Um, in, for example, in a Russian fairy tale, Helen the Beautiful betrays her husband uh, Ivan, and she betrays him for a dragon like man. And uh, so we can see the relationship of the dragon and the snake. Um, so yeah, so in some versions, the woman would be the killer herself, or she would ally with the enemy of the hero and have him, have him do the dirty job. And Robert Graves suggests, for example, that goddess, goddess Isis, because uh, her husband got killed by his brother Seth, okay, and... And then she put his like body together and so he could live again. But um, so yeah, so Osiris would uh, like rise every year. And so uh, where I was, where was I? Um, so Graves suggests that actually goddess Isis, she sided with Seth who killed Osiris. Mm, and that may be how versions of two male gods uh, two, two gods fighting were born but usually somewhere the female figure is there even with sorry if you can hear my son laughing a lot <laughs> so even in the story of Saint George who is very often seen as a um, figure who inherited a lot of uh, Perun's um, characteristics and worship in especially Eastern Slavic lands. But yeah, we have St. George who kills the dragon and there's always a kind of a princess somewhere. So yeah, she's there. So yeah, and last but not definitely, definitely not least, um, we have the Hindu goddess Kali. Who dances on her husband's Shiva's corpse. So yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie. Um, so yeah, so we could try and see a sacred ritual here and I'm not talking about like human sacrifice because um, 
I like the in in the initiation right stories um I mean it more like a metaphor because yeah we don't know even close to enough to be able to to tell when and if and where there were real human sacrifices and um when the human sacrifice was a truth of the myth but not like our reality so in short there probably were human sacrifices in various times and places but i suspect that there there were much less of them than we might expect but yeah i don't deny they, they were there but what i mean that when um these myths were a part of um belief system they uh, not necessarily there was a human sacrifice involved it was being killed was a metaphor and as i said in the initiation rites you like couldn't you couldn't initiate someone by killing him right <laughs> you had to pretend to kill him like uh yeah like we pretend that jesus is killed and he's there's his grave in the church during easter and um yeah okay um so <laughs> my son is singing or something so again uh so we could try and see this ritual here in which the goddess kills her husband when the time comes so that he can be young and strong and make the earth fertile again and um yeah i have this other picture here of yash so it's yash or it might be the representation of the spring god Yarilo or Yarovit from Western Polish traditions. So you can see here that she she's done her work and there he is. There's the rider. He's coming back. back. And um, it might happen, the, the murder itself, it might happen at night time. Um, because of that legend I told you about, but we don't know really. And then, yeah, then she follows suit after he's killed. Um, and she cleanses herself from this, um, like, yeah, sin of murder, we could call it, from what she's done. But she had to do, she had to do it. But yeah, so she had to cleanse herself and, and die and be renewed herself as well and she also gives uh, the god a golden key that she possesses it's the key to the earth or alternatively it's the key is the primrose and and then he comes back and the spring can come starting with a new day so yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you've enjoyed, uh, also please let me know because it always, you know, it always um, makes me want to work more on the videos. Apologies for weird sounds that my son is making. And have a lovely day, lovely spring, or, or if you're on the other hemisphere uh lovely autumn mm, and yeah i also have her here uh, thank you so much for watching <laughs> bye